Hey everyone and welcome to Caswell's Kappa, the channel where you learn how to work on your Kappa step by step. In today's video we're going to learn how to replace the exhaust camshaft actuator. Uh, I'm going to provide you with everything you need ranging from pages from the service manual to torque specs and part numbers. So you'll be able to find all of that in the info sheet which you can find in the description. So let's get to the video. All right, so where is the camshaft actuators? Well, both the actuators are located on top of the engine and underneath the engine cover. So first thing we'll have to do is remove the cover. All right, so to remove the engine cover, there's four studs holding it on around the cover. And remember, if your engine is hot, be very careful. You might burn yourself. So there's a stud here, 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 and on this side as well. So I usually start from one of the corners, and sometimes the other corner will come off too like that. So those two are off. Go to the top and voila, your cover is off. To those of you who do not have your insulation here and you have access to everything, you can just move on to the next section of the video where we point out how to remove and locate the actuators, which are located right here by the way. Alright, so now that our cover is off, most of you will have insulation in the way and you won't really see any of your coil packs or the actuators which are located up here. So in order to remove your insulation, what you're going to want to do is you're going to have these connections to remove as well as the actuator connections. To remove these, just grab the tab up front, push down, and pull out. Make sure you do it to all four of those. When it comes to removing the actuator uh, connections, you see these little, I guess, tan pieces here? These are your safety clips. These keep these from, actual, uh, from accidentally coming off. You'll take these, lift up just like so. I'll show you here as well. Lift up like so and then there's a little black piece, a little square here. You're going to press that in. So you'll press in and pull right up just like so and that's how you're going to remove these connections. Now this, some of them may have a, there you go, some of them may be pretty seized up there but you'll do that to every one of those right there. Next, to remove your insulation, you're going to take your oil cap on this side. You'll unscrew it, take it up, set that to the side. Next, you're going to have a couple more pieces. You'll have a little Christmas tree connection here. You'll just take that and try to squeeze it up as much as you can. I hate these, by the way. Just like so, once that's removed, you can remove to the front of your engine. You'll notice these little clips up top. There's one here and here if you have the 2.0 LNF. If you have the 2.4, these won't be here, but at the same time, the 2.4 engine does not have insulation. So for the 2.0, you'll have two connections up here. Just take them and lift them straight up. Same one on this side. I'm missing this side though. Same thing there. Once all those are out of the way, you should be able to take your insulation and just rip it right up. Alright, so now that your insulation is off, or if it was already removed, like I told you to skip ahead earlier, the actuators are located up front right here. Now you have two different ones. You have the one on the left and one on the right. The one on the left is your intake. The one on the right is your exhaust. Well, how do you know that? They're going to be two different colors. The left side is black. Black is your intake. The right side is gray. The gray is your exhaust. So left, intake, right, exhaust. Today we're removing the exhaust, so we're removing the right one. So to remove the connections on these actuators, these gray pieces here, take them. If you haven't done this already, you should have already done this whenever you removed your insulation. Grab this here. Bring it up a little bit, and there's a little black box here. Press that in, that's your tab. Press the tab, and bring it up just like so. And if you need more room, do the same thing on the intake, and bring it right up, and set that to the side. Now you have ample room to get to your actuators. Hey guys, I wanted to interrupt for a moment to touch on just a couple of things here uh, for the exhaust camshaft actuator. Now, first things first, as, as I'm sure you could notice, uh, the ones from back then, the older versions of the actuators, they're much different than the newer ones. So these older ones, especially the exhaust one, it's black, which I mean, duh, exhaust comes out black. Whatever is going in is clean, whatever comes out is unclean. 
uh, contaminated. Now, the newer ones, not though, and I do want to touch on that for a reason. So, of course, you know, older models are going to be black and the newer ones aren't. Um, the tips are what I mainly want to talk to you about. So, as you can see, the tip is black, right? Uh, for the intake, the tip is also black. In the video, I mentioned how the intake would be gray, but the exhaust is black. But in the video, it, it was contrary, contradictory. It wasn't. Uh, that's because those were old. The old ones were both black. But nowadays, GM's a little smarter about how they do things. So the intake is gray and the exhaust is black. So it goes in clean, comes out dark or contaminated just to help you kind of get a little bit of a mental picture on what goes where. Also, intake is driver's side, exhaust is passenger side. Uh, second of all, for the actuators, as soon as you take them out, first thing you want to do is you want to look at these little filters down here. These are uh, little channels that the oil runs through. You want to make sure and look at these channels to see if there's any metal fillings in there. If you have metal fillings in there, it's not good. That either means something's rubbing and it's not supposed to, some kind of engine component and your engine's failing. Well, maybe not failing but it's on the way out or two your timing chains on the way out and you got pieces of your guide starting to uh, start getting in your oil and it's starting to get in here so just be on the lookout for any kind of contaminants that are coating this little filter here you also see that in your oil filter as well if you look in between the pleats but that's a good indicator to let you know something's not right in your engine so if that's clean as a whistle like mine is you're good to go. So that's all I wanted to uh, talk to you about or at least touch on. So now let's get back to the video. All right, now to show you all something here. Now, if we take a look at my exhaust actuator, as we can see here, I have a little bit of a oil deposit. I don't know if I can get a good zoom. Here we go. I have a little bit of oil right there, and I'm not sure why, but that could be the reason for my code currently. So, I'm going to clean this up as best as I can because I don't want any contamination entering the timing area because this is uh, connected to your camshafts and your sprocket, your timing and everything. So I'm going to clean that up as best as I can a little bit, though it is hot. And if you are doing this while it is hot, be very careful. Don't burn yourself. Get a rag and do this. So now that I'm looking at all this, I'm going to clean this up first and then I'll show you how to remove it. All right, so here we have our actuators. As you can see, I went ahead and removed my cool pack. You don't have to do that, but it does make it easier to get access to this location. So what I'm going to do now is we're going to remove this bolt right here. This is a 10 millimeter bolt. I've already pre-loosened it. And what I want to do is I want to go ahead and just get this out of the way so that it's not even a second thought. So that when I do remove the actuator, it's not falling into the spark plug chamber or it's not falling into... Um, the internal components of the engine because this is directly connected to the camshaft and the timing components so you don't want that bolt falling in there because then you're gonna have to do an engine tear down and that's the last thing that you want so i'm going to loosen this all the way as much as i can and be careful because this engine can be very hot you don't want to burn yourself again that should be good Got my bolt there, set that to the side, and now we can move on to removing the actuator. Now when it comes to removing this, it's going to be pretty seized in there, so I'd get some pliers or some vice grips or something. Vice grips would probably be better, but i got some pliers. So I'm going to grab it. You're going to twist it first. See how you can twist it now? That'll help you remove it. So now I'm going to get a good grip. Slowly lift it up just like so. Be careful not to get oil everywhere because this is connected to your oil. And there is the old actuator, as you all can see. Hold on, here we go. And there is your old actuator, just like that. And we can set that to the side and grab our new one. Now, I did want to show you all the differences between this, and this is still hot. That's why I have a rag. Um, so you can see the differences between the new actuator and the old actuator. The old one's black. This is from 2008, and this is the newer model. I'm not sure when this was... Uh, 
created but as you can see you can definitely tell the differences here this one has the part number clearly written up top this one does not they both still say exhaust and they have different numbers as well as different codes on the uh, that are stamped onto it so um, if you are just doing an inspection on these before you install it make sure to inspect the o-ring right here make sure it's not torn or anything now for whatever reason I had a oil spill down there where this was located I'm not sure why but I'm sure uh, something had to have been wrong there so I'm gonna go ahead and install this new one and uh, yeah let's get to it so before we install this guy what we're gonna want to do is take some fresh oil and we're gonna want to line the o-ring right here I know it's blurry but you're gonna want to line that o-ring right there so now that the o-ring is lined and make sure you clean this area too I did forget to do that so make sure there's no contaminants in there and whatnot before you install this so now what we're gonna do is pay attention to where uh, the bolt was lined up there's not really a way you can't install this correctly there's only one way for the bolt to go in and the actuator so we're gonna take this after you've put the oil on there this helps create a good seal take this guy we're going to firmly press him in until he fully seats you heard it click that's the o-ring popping past the cylinder head so that's in there I'm gonna take my socket and I'm gonna slowly loosen it or uh, tighten it in there if it gets stuck be careful you don't want this um, you don't want to over thread I forget the term for it but you don't want to um, screw up the threads on these actuators then you've got a whole other problem as well so that's tight there I'm gonna grab my wrench and I'm just gonna get it real snug real quick just so I know it's not going anywhere and now that that's snug, I'm going to get my torque wrench and we're going to torque this down. Alright, so when we torque this down, it's 10 newton meters or 89 inch pounds. Grab my torque wrench here. Just like so, that's torqued down. It's barely anything. So now that that's torqued down, I can put on my cool packs, put on everything, which for me it's not much, but for those who took the insulation off, remember you're going to have the... Um, the Christmas tree, the clips up front, your oil cap, uh, all that will be after you put your insulation back on. So put the insulation on, then you can do the fronts, the Christmas tree, then the oil cap, and then you'll do the coil pack connections and then your actuator connections. But for those who do not have that, we can now take our actuators here. And just so y'all know, as you can see here, you got a gray and you got a purple. The gray here is for the intake. The purple is for the exhaust. Take this, pop it in. Take this one here, pop it in. Take your tan and pop those in. Your safeties, those are good. And if you did take out your cool pack, make sure to just put that in like so pop it in there and you'll tighten it down I can't remember what the torque spec is but it's on one of my cool pack videos so you'll torque that down and then just reconnect that and once you do all that you have completed this procedure all right thank you so much for checking out the video I hope that it helped you out and that you learned something new I want to remind y'all to check out the website there's a lot of good info on there ranging some, uh, from service manual pages to recalls all kind of good stuff even brochures from back then shows you all the colors and the options that were available really neat stuff i look through it every now and then kind of wish i had a brazen hey whatever uh so anyways that's all i have for y'all today and uh, i will see y'all next time until then